Hey. You alright, Pete? Yep. Knees are going a bit, but. <laughs> well, here we go before you start. That's true. But no, that's not the way to do it. It was nearly in there, Pete. Little washer, big washer. <laughs> It's looking a treat. Lovely jubbly. Next is the thermostat housing. Calling all viewers of a chopper is bored, we're building a thermostat housing. This is it. And this is the other bit. It's a lid and a base, and the thermostat drops in like so. And this thermostat is very like the one that you will have in your car. But I bet you've never, ever, 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 ever seen one working. Until now, that is. Ah. Ah. And then the water can go through. Yeah, that's hot! So, putting it... You like that, didn't you, by the way? That was a nice little bit of science. A bit of workshop science for you. Now, first job, to put it all together, is putting a little bit of silicon around the base, just as a sealant. Squidge this round. There you go. And that drops in like that. Then the thermostat just sits in its little rebated seat. And then the top just squeezes on like so. And then it's just four nuts and bolts. Some of the hoses to the thermostat housing, there's the two main ones, top and bottom, and then two other pipes come off it. This one is a bypass pipe for when the thermostat's closed, and this one will go to the oil heat exchanger. The whole unit nestles between the exhaust pipe here on this side, the back of the engine, and in front of the radiator and the fan shroud. And the bottom hose off the thermostat housing goes straight into the radiator which drops on a tree, like so, and then up above goes onto this pipe rail. I just need to... And in she pops. Uh, and then we can move on to the oil heat exchanger. In fact, fabricating a strap to attach it to the aircraft. Can you guess what this is? Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't know, but you should. It is an oil heat exchanger. It's a sump because it's the reservoir to hold the oil in. In the top is your filler cap attached to a dipstick, and you actually have to put the mark on the dipstick because it's a kit helicopter, so you have to do all these little things yourself. And if you have a look inside, you'll see that this helicopter actually has two radiators, the big one, and then another little radiator that's inside this oil sump and the idea of that is that the water from the engine from the cooling system flows through that little radiator in here the oil from the engine which sits and flows through this sump surrounds that radiator so it means that both the oil and the water from the engine are kept at the same temperature which is good news for the engine what you have to do though is fabricate a strap to attach this to the aircraft all the instructions are in the manual it's made out of a piece of steel and you've just got to bend it to the right length, drill a couple of holes in it and you're sorted. So, first job, bender, this way. Sorry, this way. This is a bender and it's a serious piece of kit. It is not essential to wear goggles using this machine, but it is essential to have reinforced underwear because if you stand anywhere near this handle, you will get a serious whomping. All you do is you open up the jaws like that, you pass in metal, so, then clamp it with this lever, then pull on the one ping handle, and then gradually bend this up. It needs to go a little bit past 90 degrees because it will spring back, but not too much past, otherwise it will be difficult to rectify. Looks good enough to me. Glad to say nobody got whomped. There you have it, look. A right angle bend. Lovely. To mark up where the next bend is going to be, you need to get some of the rubber strip that's going to run on the inside of this bracket. Get two thicknesses of it and put that 
just against the edge of my first bend, like so, slot in the heat exchanger, and then I'll know exactly where to bend the other end just by simply marking along the edge of the sump. There we go, I'll square that off with the square, a couple more bends, then I can spray it all up, stick on the rubber, and then I can put the whole lot into the aircraft. Here it is, all sorted. There's the bracket along the bottom, you can see the rubber in there like that. Now it fits in here, behind the pilot. Next job is to put on all the oil system and cooling system hoses and you do get a couple of plans here. This is a kind of topographical plan that shows you what connects to what and then there's another one underneath which gives you more detail about what it should actually look like when you look at the side of the aircraft. And I've got all the pipes I... No, I haven't. There's another one. So that's another pipe. I have no idea where that goes. Now, I, what I do know is that these are oil pipes. They're very special. They are Teflon pipes underneath this stainless steel coating and where these um, come close to anything else they have to actually be um, a co protected covering because it acts like a bit of a file this stuff um, but they last forever. So start with something you know that's the thing and I know where the thermostat is and that's there so I want a pipe that connects the thermostat and the oil sump heat exchanger. So that should go from there to there. That fits a treat. The expansion tank goes up here, I know that much. This is the inlet side of the water pump. Next is the bypass pipe from the thermostat housing. That, I'll do that up later. Then this side of the inlet manifold goes up to the expansion tank. Like so, that looks nice. Now, what about some oil pipes? Hmm. I'm going to connect up the oil filter here, which is a disposable cartridge filter, to the bottom of the engine. Two pipes, there's an in and out on the oil filter. Now, these oil pipes, when you connect them, you take out these protective end caps and then they need a little bit of oil smeared on the threads inside here and also the threads where they connect to to stop the aluminium galling which is when you like get a little burr on it that might form and because it's quite soft aluminium when you then grind the two together it will create a groove in the aluminium. Just a little bit. Now this one is the out one. It's held on by a couple of straps at the back that attach to the radiator and then three bolts that clamp it onto the end of the exhaust that's already fixed on the engine. So we'll just whip these nuts off, plunk that through there like that and then I can start attaching it. This is a, effectively like a bit of a ball joint which means that there is the ability for this to move slightly in relation to the engine and still keep it sealed. Go, that's the one. The helicopter is now more than halfway complete. It's getting very exciting because it really is starting to look like a helicopter now. Even Pete's excited, aren't you, Pete? Not a lot, no. Right, that's it. The muffler sorted. Next up, the fuel system. A very quick explanation of how this fuel system is piped. You've got a fuel tank either side, the fuel comes down here, through this isolator, down here, around these pipes, through these, those are those fuel pumps, two fuel pumps, round here, through this, through the filter, into the injectors. Have you got that? Good. Right, let's get on with it. Just put a bit of glue on this plate on the airframe and also glued up 
the rubber, having rubbed it down with a bit of sandpaper first. That just needs to go tacky. 